Hello everyone. I've been wanting to add a light speed effect to my game since I started working on it nearly two years ago. So check out the effect. I've added this effect when the player changes levels, so when you're progressing from the campaign to level to level, you're going to see this between the levels instead of like a loading screen. If you recall, I created a star field for these levels. So the stars in the background are actually occupying 3D space and are being instance rendered. This gives me fine grained control over all the stars, and so I can use the actual stars and the light speed effect to jump. Since I previously added HDR lighting values, I can boost the light, the star's light's intensity so to make them brighter. And my previous bloom pass naturally picks up on very intense lights and adds a bloom effect to them. So this makes the stars look like they start to glow and blur around. So you can see they're glowing and starting to blur before it finally jumps into them. The other thing you may notice is that the stars are stretching. So to achieve this, I lock the player's camera, and I use the camera's front vector to figure out which direction the star should stretch in. First, I stretch the stars in local space by scaling the star along its z-axis. Then I take the camera's rotation quaternion and create a rotation matrix from the quaternion. I apply the rotation matrix after the scale matrix. I then load this matrix as a standard uniform, and the star field is instance rendered, which means I do a single draw call and draw all the stars but this matrix doesn't change uh, from star to star. It's the same for every star. So I can just do a single uniform and apply it before the, each individual star's model matrix. And so that doesn't interfere with instance rendering or anything. It just applies the same matrix to all the stars and they all stretch. So you can see all of them are stretching, which is just an extra matrix before the model matrix. I also created some sound effects to go with the star jump. I'm not too happy with the swirl effect at the end, but the end effect is probably good enough for the MVP. I also created a slow motion effect where after the player destroys three enemy ships, they're presented with the ability to slow down time and it's shown up here in the top. So if we destroy objectives, the ship actually spawns special fighters that will take down the player. A smart player can save the slow motion so that it, it is able to fight these special fighters. Like this. So fighting three fighters is actually not easy, but being, having the ability to slow down and destroy them can make the player survive longer. And since the two carrier ships have some distance between the two ships, being able to survive longer above the enemy ship means you can destroy more objectives. And for each of these objectives, it spawns a special hunting ship on you. But if you're killed in slow you still lose the effect. The effect works by just holding down control, and there's a cheat to give you infinite. Which is quite fun, but mostly it's used for debugging. I've also created asteroids. This helps create some variability in the levels. They're a special class called an void mesh, and they use avoidance spheres, which is the same system that ships use when trying to avoid the large carrier ships. And so the AI, will, when entering the sphere, will start to avoid the center of the sphere, causing them not to collide with the mesh. However, the player can still collide with it. The avoidance meshes are edited just like any fighter ship or carrier ship. 
you go to the model editor and you're able to select the asteroid and configure it from there. You can add the collision, define it, and add the avoidance spheres. And so that's about it for this update. Like and subscribe for more updates.